ask members to leave the chamber quietly, please. The next item of business today is a members' business debate on motion number uh, 64, in the name of Fulton McGregor, on stand up to bullying. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Will those members who wish to speak in the debate please press their request to speak buttons now? Mr. McGregor, I call you to speak seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It's a privilege to have the opportunity to lead a debate on this very important subject, and I'd like to thank colleagues from across the Chamber for supporting my motion congratulating the Diana Ward charity for their Stand Up to Bullying campaign. The Diana Ward was set up as a legacy to Princess Diana and her belief that young people have the power to change the world for the better. The aim of the organisation is to inspire and recognise social action in young people across Scotland and the UK, and I think that they deserve tremendous credit for the work that they do. We should also note that the fantastic work of the Big Lottery Fund, who have recently awarded a grant of £50,000 to the Diana Award as part of a larger programme of grants awarding anti-bullying, which grants towards sorry anti-bullying, which have totaled over £1 million since 2011. Presiding officer, I would like to take this opportunity to encourage colleagues to get involved in the Back to School campaign currently being run by the Diana Award, encouraging children and young people to never suffer in silence. Details can, of course, be found on their website. Scotland's anti-bullying service, Respect Me, was set up in 2007 by the Scottish Government and supports local authorities across Scotland in developing anti-bullying policies. They have created a consistent approach to combating this issue across Scotland. In 2015, Respect Me carried out the largest ever research into bullying in Scotland and found that 30% of children had experienced some form of bullying in the 2013-14 school year. Their findings also showed that 40% of those who had experienced bullying had either suffered wholly or partly online. Presiding officer, it is clear that online bullying is on the rise. Children and young people spend a huge amount of time online and it becomes another world for some. Inhibitions that, that one may have in person may be forgotten in the virtual world. So at a recent meeting with Inspector Andy Thompson from Monklands Police, I was encouraged to hear about the child exploitation and online protection project being run across Lanarkshire to educate children and young people across the region in the importance of online security. A large focus of this initiative is about making children aware of the dangers of sharing their details and images online. On that note, I'd like to congratulate Inspector Thompson and his team on their recent success being shortlisted in the Safer Communities Award in the Early Intervention and Education category at last night's award ceremony. I really hope that this drives this issue into a more national setting. It is worth noting that bullying can happen to anyone of any age. Bullying by adults has probably increased with the rise of social media. We as politicians across this chamber regularly dismiss attacks from, as, as being from keyboard warriors, but if we were to look deeper into it, there are likely elements of harassment. All parts of society must stand up to bullying and we must lead by example as members of this parliament and challenge any behaviour that we see or hear. We only have to look as far back as Sunday to see the political editor of a Sunday newspaper making jokes about the issue of bullying. Individuals in a position of influence, like someone who has a large readership and ability to get a message to tens of thousands of people of all ages, should be using that position to educate the dangers of bullying rather than sending out a message that it's something to make jokes about in order to get a few laughs or a few retweets. Stonewall Scotland, Scotland's LGBT equality charity, has made some incredible inroads into bullying and discrimination of LGBT people in Scotland. However, the research shows that a shocking 99% of children have heard homophobic language at school. It also shows that more than half of LGBT people in Scotland have suffered homophobic bullying. There must be a focus on education. We must ensure that everyone young and old is aware of the impact bullying can have. Some may think that they're having a laugh or it's just a bit of fun, but the research shows that self-harming is on the rise amongst victims of bullying. In extreme circumstances, we know that people have taken their own lives as a result of bullying and abuse. And there's been some recent examples of this. Stonewall Scotland's research suggests that one in four young LGBT people in Scotland has attempted suicide. This is a terrifying statistic and action must be taken now to stop it. Half of all suicides among young, young people are attributed directly to B as a result of bullying, with bully victims two to nine times more likely to attempt suicide. Sam H is Scotland's mental health charity and works closely with anti-bullying organisations due to the impact bullying can have on the victim's mental health. 
There is a drive going on to raise awareness of the effects of bullying and training for adults to spot the signs and deliver training to children and young people on the impact of their actions. I would encourage all schools and youth organisations to get involved with this. September is Suicide Awareness Month, of course, and Saturday is Suicide Awareness Day. I would encourage all members to get involved in raising awareness and wear yellow on Saturday. I've decided to wear the yellow tie today. The Scottish Government should be commended on the action it has taken since 2007 in combating bullying across the country. The campaigns to raise awareness are having a great success, but there is, of course, still more to be done. As I mentioned, more bullying and harassment is being moved to an online setting, making it even harder to notice when the victim doesn't speak out. Projects like that of Inspector Thompson that I mentioned are a great example of the work being done and should be replicated across the country. The message must be clear and it must be loud. Bullying isn't acceptable. If you experience it or see someone else being bullied, speak out, tell someone, never suffer in silence. Presiding officer, I want to finish with Respect Me's mission statement. It's a powerful message that everyone should know. You don't have to like me, agree with me, or enjoy doing the same things that I do, but you do have to respect me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms McGregor. I call Annie Wells to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Four minutes, please, Ms Wells. Thank you, presiding officer. I'm very grateful for being given the opportunity to speak in the debate today and raise awareness of the credible campaign that is Stand Up to Bullying. I think it's very easy to think of bullying in a very set way, and I'm sure the image that springs to most people's minds is one of the school bully harassing his peers or her peers outside of the school gates. Whilst this undoubtedly occurs, we should be doing everything we can to stop it. I want to raise, I want to raise as others have, the effect bullying has on all ages and backgrounds that in recent years, and it's taken on new forms such as social media and the medium of the internet. I was deeply disturbed to learn back in July about the death of a young 16-year-old girl, Brittany Massachini, from Glasgow, who, as a result of cyberbullying, took her own life at the age of just 16. Another Glasgow teenager who, as a result of all online bullying, attempted to take his own life only last month. Time and time again, I hear jibes and comments, comments to the effect that victims of cyberbullying should simply turn off their computer, a reference which Fulton made in his statement. I find this attitude frustrating and, as I am sure as many others do, the simpler solution to this is it should not occur in the first place at all. I am pleased to see that Police Scotland is making steps to tackle this issue, making a statement last one month warning parents that they must prepare their children for the dangers of bullying and referring them to a number of useful websites such as Respect Me, Get Safe Online and Think You Know and assuring them that internet trolls would be traced and prosecuted for their acts online. I am under, under no illusion, however, that more still needs to be done, which is why I support this motion today in raising awareness of cyberbullying. Linking back to my original point, I was pleased to see the efforts of Glasgow University, which carried out a notable campaign last year seeking to widen people's views on bullying and what can be done. Last year, for example, the University of Glasgow launched an anti-bullying campaign on its campus to tackle the casual discrimination among students and staff. The Full Stop campaign highlighted offensive comments, not always deemed blatantly offensive, through the use of posters putting example quotes into isolation. I also want to turn my attention to the issues of LGBTI bullying again, which we all support the, the, the links in cross party that we believe LGBT, LGBTI bullying has to come to an end as well. Um, as an LGBTI person at school, I suffered bullying at school as well. And that was quite some time ago when I was 13 and 30 years old, I think we're still speaking about it. So again, how, how do we make that better? How do we get that um, resolved? How do we put a stop to it? And only um, recently, the Thai research reports that 64% of LGBT youth reported being bullied as a result of their gender, identity or their sexual orientation, and a shocking 37% had attempted suicide at least once as a result of bullying. To tackle this issue, Thai has called for cross-party working groups, and I know that the cross-party support is there amongst us all in the Chamber, and I know at Glasgow Pride only a few weeks ago there was a full show of support. Um, so I would like to 
see the, the issue tackled cross-party and the implementation of the LGBT inclusive education as a legislative matter. I think Kai's proposals are great and I would like to see the topic debated in this chamber in the future. Once again, I would like to echo the sentiments of everyone in the chamber with regards to the Stand Up to Bullying campaign and congratulate Diana Ward's charity for its efforts. As with most things, awareness is crucial and hopefully the campaign will go some way to altering mindsets. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Wells. I call Elaine Smith to be followed by the Minister to sum up. Ms Smith. Sorry. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, yes, I'm too quick. I'm happy Mr. to Stevenson defer be followed to Ms. By Ms. Smith. Smith, if you wish. Thank you. Sorry, how dare I miss you out? No. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I hope that was not uh, bullying from the Chair, and I know it wasn't. Uh, but it certainly it, wasn't. It, it, is a, it is a very serious subject, and like many uh, members' debate, I, debates, I expect this will be one where there is no disagreement between us and our views on this. Uh, let me start by congratulating Fulton McGregor on giving us the opportunity to debate uh, the important subject. It is a subject, of course, that uh, is not confined to Scotland, it's not confined to these islands. islands. It's uh, an international problem. Uh, in the last month, UNICEF uh, released figures that showed two-thirds of young people surveyed in more than 18 countries had been victims of bullying. Now, how do people come to be bullied? Uh, and it's issues over which they have no control, very largely. Sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender, physical appearance. And bullying, even if it doesn't involve touching the victim, is a form of violence. And we should treat it as seriously as we treat any violence whatsoever. It's also an attack on diversity. And diversity has a huge value. Uh, the greater the diversity in our communities, the greater the strength of our communities, the greater ability to respond to changing uh, circumstances. But bullying, particularly for youngsters, is something that can endure well into adulthood and for the rest of people's lives. So it's not something to be treated trivially uh, or to be ignored. It can lead to depression, academic failure, changes in behavior in the people who themselves are bullied. Fear is what leads, uh, it follows from bullying. Mental health will of course be affected by people who are bullied as well. And furthermore, it's a um, behavior that will be copied. If bullying is tolerated, others will see that it goes unpunished and will themselves be open to the potential that they themselves uh, will become bullies. And in the modern uh, electronic world, we have some particular concerns about the new ways in which people can be bullied through social media, through emails, through texting, uh, and so on. And there are some particular things that are different about the new social media. First of all, adults don't understand social media in the way that youngsters do. So the moderating influence of an adult who might understand what is going on in a bully's mind is likely to be less clear cut than it would be with the kind of physical bullying uh, that we've been used to in the past. Similarly, it tends to be a solitary activity. So there will tend not to be someone sitting next to the keyboard, the person who's seeking to bully someone online. There isn't the moderating influence of someone looking over their shoulder who might just say, hey, Jimmy, that's just enough. Perhaps we should head off. It's also an activity which, being solitary as well, um, takes place in many cases late at night uh, when there may have been drink taken. So there are all sorts of disinhibitions associated with a bully that are distinctly different and more threatening in the online world. Is there anything we can do about it? Well, yes. Perhaps the uh, social media providers could help by monitoring what's actually going on in social media. We know the technology is there. Twitter, for example, has a regular banner uh, of what's trending. In other words, they know what's going on on Twitter. Perhaps it's time Twitter and other social media providers uh, had a look at whether they 
can help detect and inhibit uh, bullying through, through that medium. I congratulate the Stand Up to Bullying campaign on their actions. I hope that we too can be part of making an effort to promote a kind of more understanding society. I hope this debate makes its modest contribution to that. But we all have a duty to stand up to oppressive behaviour because that's what bullying is. Presiding officer. Thank you very much, Mr. Stevenson. I now call Elaine Smith to be followed, the Minister, in summing up. Many thanks, Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating Fulton McGregor on securing the debate on this important matter this evening. Um, and as we've heard, cyberbullying is a key issue that's increasing in relevance every year in Scotland, and it's something that we should all be taking very seriously. Nowadays, bullying doesn't stop at the school gates, and its victims aren't limited to young people, as noted by Fulton McGregor in his opening remarks. It occurs in homes, wider communities, boardrooms, lunchrooms, stadiums, pubs. It's all around us. And, of course, bullying exists online. We know that. And this can actually involve a persistent and unrelenting attack, and it often targets those who are already vulnerable in one way or another. <clears throat> and access to technology, but specifically the use of mobile devices means that those being bullied online can't even go home to a safe haven and then shut the door on the bullies because they're with them constantly. And such bullying can, as we know, have tragic results, including suicide amongst young people who are the victims of sustained online abuse, uh, particularly when it's from their peers. And that was mentioned in her speech by Annie Wells earlier. Raising the issues in debates like this, I think, is a good step on the way to addressing the very modern scourge of cyberbullying, but it does need more work right across society. And I thought Stuart Stevenson made some particularly interesting points on the issue. We should recognise and commend the work done by the Diana Award mentioned in the motion and also other charities in our communities, and in particular, the Stand Up to uh, Bullying campaign. But in order to adequately tackle cyberbullying, we need to raise awareness more widely about the negative consequences of personal attacks on others, which are perpetrated from behind the barrier of a computer screen or a mobile phone. We've all heard stories of schoolyard bullying and attacks via phone or social media. And in some cases, this strays into direct harassment as well. But quite often, public awareness of the difference between joking around and the more serious charge of harassment is pretty poor. So if we can increase knowledge both of the outcomes and the preventions, it's possible that we can begin eventually to bring an end to the worrying phenomenon. Whilst recognising this, we should also consider the effects such abuse, or sometimes as it's known, trolling, as uh, online has on adults, especially those who've got to use social media for their jobs or simply as a means of necessary communication. They can't just turn their technology off to get away from it. Um, I think and I hope that we are finally beginning to gain a better understanding of how sexism, for example, can hurt women online. But we also need to extend this to include all forms of identity abuse. And some of that has been mentioned already in the debate. Being careful with the use of language, I think, is very important. And offensive comments shouldn't just be dismissed as banter. They can't just be dismissed as banter. As parliamentarians, I think we also need to look towards new forms of bullying that might fly under the radar as technology develops and open our minds to the fact that the victims of cyberbullying are as diverse as they are numerous. But specifically amongst young people, cyberbullying can lead to prolonged absenteeism from school as well as negative consequences on physical and mental health. Um, but of course, such effects on health and wellbeing can also occur in anyone of any age who is experiencing cyberbullying. So doing our best to address the, the individual and specific concerns of victims, I think, will go a long way to changing the, the narrative around online bullying. But I would, a word of caution, I would say that we must be careful when we're doing that not to unjustly criminalise certain sections of society, specifically the young, as uh, some interventions in the past have tended to do. So that's one word of caution at the end. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, for calling me this evening in the debate. And can I once again congratulate Fulton McGregor on securing this really important debate this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much.
now call Mark Macdonald, Minister. Seven minutes, please, to wind up. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to thank Fulton McGregor for bringing the subject of bullying to the Chamber today. And let me be absolutely clear, uh, bullying of any kind is completely unacceptable. Uh, and when it happens, we all have a responsibility to address it. We need to intervene uh, to deal with it quickly and effectively. Uh, before we talk about what is being done to address bullying, it's important to remind us all of the, of the positive lives and contributions of young people. The latest behaviour in Scottish schools research shows that the overwhelming majority of children in Scotland's schools are generally well behaved. Uh, the OECD report tells us that Scottish students are resilient uh, and further research from the Health Behaviour in Scottish Schools survey tells us that Scottish young people report high life satisfaction. Nevertheless, we must make sure that those children and young people who are affected by bullying are supported effectively. And a number of speakers have spoken in particular around the impact that bullying can have on children and young people's mental health. Uh, that's one of the reasons why this government is bringing forward a 10-year strategy for children and adolescents' health and well-being, which will focus on both physical and mental health. Uh, and we also have a dedicated mental health minister in government, which demonstrates our strong commitment in this area. Um, our national approach to anti-bullying for Scotland's children and young people has children's rights at its centre uh, and provides a focus for all anti-bullying work across Scotland. Uh, this makes it clear that as well as intervening when bullying happens, we need to tackle the root cause and help change negative views and poor perceptions so that we can stop bullying from taking place uh, in the first place. Uh, in recent years, Scotland has seen legislative and policy changes to put greater focus on supporting our children and young people's well-being, which is why we are refreshing our anti-bullying guidance, supported by key stakeholders including Respect Me, Scotland's anti-bullying service for children and young people, which this government established and funds to provide support across all Scotland's local authorities and schools. Uh, this government believes that there is no place in Scotland for prejudice or discrimination and that everyone deserves to be treated fairly. We must continue unrelentingly to tackle prejudice and discrimination and promote equality and diversity. And this begins early uh, in schools. And the refresh of the national approach to anti-bullying will be clearer about the impact of prejudice-based bullying, including homophobic, biphobic and transphobic bullying and how schools and youth organisations can respond appropriately to it. Uh, health and wellbeing is at the core of the school curriculum and relationships, sex sexual health and parenthood education are in turn key to health and wellbeing education. In 2014, we published guidance which clearly states how important it is that relationships, sexual health and parenthood education addresses diversity and reflects issues relating to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex young people or children with LGBTI parents, such as same-sex ma same marriage and hate crime reporting. And in response to the points that Annie Wells raised around the work that will be taken forward, uh, we as a government will continue to work with a range of organisations to ensure that schools address the important issues that LGBTI young people face. And we will ensure that teachers have the skills, knowledge and the confidence to embed inclusive approaches within their schools. Through addressing prejudice-based bullying and promoting an inclusive approach to relationships, sexual health and parenthood education, children will learn about tolerance, respect and equality to help address and prevent prejudice. Uh, moreover, the recently published Delivery Plan for Excellence and Equity in Scottish Education confirmed our commitment to a review of initial teacher education programmes. This will ensure that appropriate detail on equality is provided across both primary and secondary sectors and working with the GTCS, more support for teachers in equality issues is provided through career-long professional learning. It's vital that our refreshed anti-bullying policy is informed by the views and experiences of children, including more than 8,000 children and young people's responses to Respect Me's 2014 survey. The children who told us they had experienced bullying, the vast majority knew the person who was bullying them, whether online or offline. In fact, young people don't refer to bullying online as cyberbullying. Uh, bullying is bullying wherever it takes place. Uh, and we must remember that the online world is part and parcel of our children and young people's lives. And I think this gets to the heart of the point that was being made by a number of speakers about the attitude of, well, you should just turn off your computer or you should just not go on to that particular website. I think that misses the point that, first of all, we shouldn't put the, the onus on the victim to address their own behaviour uh, rather than the perpetrator, uh, but also it fundamentally misunderstands the importance often that access to the internet and social media can have for young people in many other ways. But we must do all we can do to ensure that they are safe, resilient and equipped to respond to the challenges and opportunities that being a young person today brings. Uh, Fulton McGregor uh, highlighted uh, the rise in terms of online bullying. 
Uh, this government is committed to make the internet a safer place for children and young people. We want them to enjoy the internet and all that it has to offer. We also want them to stay in control and know what to do and who to go to if they feel at risk. Uh, that's why we have committed to refreshing our internet safety action plan, linking it with our strategies on digital participation uh, and cyber resilience, so that appropriate frameworks of training, support and information are in place for professionals and parents, as well as children and young people. Uh, Stuart Stevenson, I think, made an important point around the role of social media providers uh, in relation to the bullying that can often take place on their platforms. I think that there is a job that needs to be done by these providers, uh, many of which are multi-billion dollar companies, uh, in order to ensure that the users of those uh, platforms uh, are safe in the interactions that they are undertaking and that any behaviour that risks uh, either bullying taking place or, or, or other forms uh, of harassment from being encouraged uh, should be stamped down on as soon as possible. I think there is enough evidence out there to suggest that the response often by these providers uh, is at best sluggish uh, and at worst non-existent. Uh, and I think more needs to be done by these organisations to tackle that. Uh, Elaine Smith, I think, rightly highlighted the dangers that can exist in the online world uh, for children and young people. But it's also important to remember that the internet is a fundamental part of the lives of children and young people today uh, and can also be a fantastic source of education and entertainment and can often be the first place that they go to uh, to talk to their friends and indeed to meet new friends. And I would encourage young people, uh, while at the same time being uh, cognizant of the risks that exist, uh, also to embrace the internet's huge potential for expanding uh, their horizons. Uh, for me, uh, and I'm sure for everyone here today, I want a Scotland where young people can enjoy all the positive aspects that new technology and social media bring without the fear of being bullied or exploited, where young people form healthy relationships and value diversity, uh, where our children and young people can grow up in a safe environment in which their rights and needs are respected and protected, and where every child and young person is supported to be who they want to be, to be treated equally, to enjoy equal chances and choices in all aspects of their lives and to be valued for the contribution they make to our society and communities. I thank again Fulton McGregor for bringing this debate to the Chamber and for all speakers for making their contributions. We all have a role to play in this and I'm sure we will all work, continue to work together to ensure that our children's lives are as safe as they possibly can be. Thank you. That concludes the debate. I now close this meeting of Parliament.